Hey guys, that's Rockets. Now today we're going to talk about children getting bored, distracted or upset, so you know how to deal with this if it happens on your lesson. Regardless of your student's age, if your students are dying to know what will be next, you're unlikely to have any such problems at all. Exceptions may occur if the child is going through personal issues like losing a pet or severe disagreements in the family, and they may be so upset that they're not capable of cooperation at all. If that happens, the greatest of personal communication skills might not help, and you may have to finish the lesson early. In these exceptional cases, the parents will be aware, and they are likely to understand that their child was not really ready for the lesson. And an experienced teacher can tell whether the child is really upset for a reason, or if he's just trying to get out of the lesson. If the child is protesting against being taught, then the teacher's authority kicks in. And this is something that should already be established on the very first lesson, that you are not a person to cross. So military training really helps a lot here. I had a case where a child was demonstrating such careless handwriting that I made him write the word 10 times and his handwriting really improved rapidly. However, even the most motivated of kids get bored or just lazy sometimes. That's just the way they are. And the preparation for this lies before it occurs. Just resonate with the child. Have them like and respect you beforehand. Have the child interested in what you teach. That's mainly done by preparing a good and exciting lesson. And secondly, to keep the child interested in you, well, be interested in them. If a child tells you that they had a dream about zombies coming to their house, listen and express all interest. It's okay on an individual lesson, so long as it's all spoken in English, and so long as it takes, well, no more than four minutes. If a child tells you that during a trip, he and his mate spent the night in a hotel room jumping on the bed and having a raging pillow fight, same thing. Personally, I like it when children tell me these things, and it's really a sign of trust. I had a situation where uh, the child was telling me about his former teacher who happened to beat him during the lesson. So beating a child is A, illegal in most countries. In the United Kingdom, for instance, you would get arrested for any physical contact with the child. B, it's detrimental to the learning process. And C, well, it's the action of a terrible person. I mean, good luck getting into heaven after something like that. So. This teacher, um, let's call him Max. So needless to say, when the mother came in, the child was crying because Max had just beaten him. Well, of course he was fired. So I listened to the child tell me that, and I thought, okay, now we can really turn this the other way to focus it on the lesson. So how do I do that? Well, I said, okay, imagine that zombies came to your house. When did the zombies start eating Max? How long have the zombies been eating Max? Okay, what are we going to do next? Are we going to dance on the roof? Okay. When did we start dancing on the roof with the zombies? How long have we been dancing on the roof with the zombies? Okay, what next? Well, are we going to jump on the bed and have a pillow fight with zombies? Okay, when did we start jumping on the bed and having a pillow fight with the zombies? How long have we been jumping on the bed and having a pillow fight with the zombies? And this really helps me to focus the kid on the lesson. So keep that in mind. A good teacher can always find a way to focus the child on the lesson and have fun at the same time. So keep that in mind. Good luck with your lessons. Remember, a good teacher is always learning. All the best. Good luck.